All right, class, welcome back. Uh, this section is 3.2, and today we're going to be talking about comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. Uh, don't forget to write your name over here on the side. And today's date. So um, when we have uh, numbers that are represented as fractions or decimals, sometimes we need to make some sort of comparison, like figure out which one's bigger or smaller, something like that. So take a look at this question. Three students are selling chocolate bars as a fundraiser for their school. The bars are packaged in cartons. Artivan sold two and two-thirds of a carton, Isha sold five halves of cartons, and Daniel sold 2.25 cartons. And the question is, which one sold the most chocolate bars, and how do we know? So uh, one way to do this, uh, to represent this, is to actually uh, show our fractions and just draw a little picture. So I'll just uh, do a few pictures here, Artivan, Isha, and Daniel. Now, uh, before I draw these pictures, I just want to remind you guys, uh, it should be reviewed from last year, but there's different ways of showing um, uh, uh, fractions. So, for example, this right here, 2 and 2 thirds, is something we call a mixed fraction. And it's mixed because we've got this 2 in front, and then in addition to that, we have 2 thirds. By comparison, this one right here, 5 halves, this is something we call an improper fraction. And uh, it's not that there's anything wrong with it, but um, instead of uh, writing uh, a, a number out front here, we've just put all of our numbers into the into the numerator. Okay, so for Artivan, two and two thirds. Well, uh, I'm just going to draw them as circles. So that's two, and then two thirds. So there's a full one, and there's another full one. And if I was to split this last one up into thirds then it might be like one third, two thirds. So two and two thirds look something, something like this. For Isha, I wanna show five halves. So if I have one, I can split that into two halves. And another one I can split into two more halves. And if I fill these in, so that's one, two, three, four. I've got four halves, but I wanna show five halves, so I need another one. And I split that into half, and I'll fill in half of it. So one way to think of five halves, five over two, I've got one, two, three, four, five halves. Uh, you'll notice that that's actually the same thing as, well, there's one full one, and there's another full one. So that's like two full cartons. And then I've got one half left over. So five uh, halves is the same as two and a half. Now with Daniel, I run into a little bit of a problem here because I'm not quite sure how to draw my same picture here with 2.25. So what I need to actually do is with 2.25, I need to convert that into a uh, into a fraction. So 2.25, well I know there's a 2 out front, but this 0.25, I can represent that, we learned the other day, you can represent that as 25 over 100. Which, if you take a look at it, there's a common factor here between top and bottom. I can divide top and bottom by 25. And what I end up with is 2 and 1 over 100 divided by 25 is 4. So 2 and 1 over 4, or 2 and a quarter. So if I was going to represent Daniel, I would have one full one, uh, another full one, and then the last one here I'm going to split up into quarters and I'm going to fill in one quarter of that. So when we look at when we look over our uh, our three students, uh, it looks like uh, Artivan sold the most. Now there's two ways we kind of know this. The first way is to look at uh, the actual number, and, and once we have them all as fractions, that you notice how they all sold two full cartons, and that's great. But then just compare that to uh, to the the uh, fraction that goes along with that. Two thirds compared to a half compared to a quarter. Well, two thirds is bigger than a half is bigger than a quarter. And we can actually see this visually when we look at the picture. This circle, two thirds of it filled in compared to half that circle filled in, this is definitely greater. And it's certainly greater than, than a quarter. Okay, so uh, sometimes we can do comparisons between fractions, uh, and we can do it a little bit more generally, and we can do it uh, on a number line. So instead of uh, 
um, doing any big conversions, we can just sort of ballpark or estimate. And, and one way to do that is with a number line. So I'm going to start off with a number line here, and I want to compare. I want to put all of these fractions uh, in order. I want to know which one is the largest and which one is the smallest. So just taking a look at my numbers here, 2 elevenths, 2 and 3 eighths, 1 and 1 sixteenth, 14 ninths and 14 fifteenths. We can see that all these numbers fall. There's no number smaller than zero. So I'll start my number line there. And no numbers bigger than three. So I'm going to kind of space it out like that. One, two, three. Now it's worth keeping in mind uh, maybe a few benchmarks. And by benchmarks, I just mean numbers uh, that occur on this number line, non-integer numbers that we know of. So maybe I'm just going to include for the sake of uh, just my benefit, one half. And then right here would be one and one half. And here would be two and one half. I'm just going to kind of use those. I don't need to keep filling in more and more. That's probably enough for me to do what I need to do. So take a look at the first one, two over 11. Well, 2 over 11, imagine if I took a pie and split it 11 ways, and I had just two pieces of that. 2 over 11 would be a very small amount of that. So, in fact, it would be between 0 and 1 half, but it would be, I think, a lot closer to 0 than it would be to 1 half. So I'm going to do 2 over 11, put it right there. The next number, 2 and 3 eighths. Well, I know that it's greater than 2. So I'm just going to think about 3 eighths. 3 eighths is not quite a half. But it's close to it. I guess I would need four eighths to make a half. So I'm going to guess that it's somewhere around here. Two and three over eight. Okay, my next number, one and one sixteenth. One right here on my number line plus one sixteenth would be just a little bit more than one. So one and one sixteenth. And then 14 over nine. I know that 14, uh, obviously 14 over nine is more than one. And if you think of it, 14 over 9, it, uh, this one I'm going to actually rewrite to make a little more sense of it. 14 over 9, I could rewrite that as 1 and 5 ninths. So 14 over 9, or 1 and 5 ninths, is going to be more than 1. And in fact, 5 ninths is just slightly more than a half. So I'm going to put it in right here. 14 over 9. And the last one here, 14 fifteenths. Well, I guess if I had 15 fifteenths, that would make one complete whole. But uh, 14 fifteenths would just be a little bit less than that. So I'll put it here on my number line. And so without having to do too much math here, we can see the order of our fractions looks like this. All right. So let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, we need to write the following numbers in order from least to greatest. So uh, one way to do that is to ballpark it with a number line. Sometimes though, this is kind of difficult to do. So just by comparison, these first two numbers, seven eighths and nine eighths, that's really easy to compare those two. And the reason that it's really easy to do that is because the denominators are the same. If you have the same denominators, then it's really simple to compare the fractions. So the problem I run into with 1 quarter and 0.75 is I don't have them written as fractions with the same denominators, but we know how to do that, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take 1 quarter, for example, 1 over 4. If I want that, if I want that to be something over 8, I just have to ask myself, well, what do I need to do to this 4 to turn it into an 8? And the answer is I'd have to multiply it by 2. Now, of course, if we're going to do something to the bottom of this fraction, something to the denominator, we have to do the same thing to the top. So I can multiply top and bottom by 2, and I get 2 over 8. Now, again, this is going to be really easy to compare to these first two fractions because I know they, they have the same denominator. So I need to do something similar now with 0.75. So 0 0.75, we can write that as 75 over 100. Now, um, that's not the same denominator as 8, and I can't think of a simple way to turn 100 into 8, but what I can do is I can simplify this. For example, I can divide top and bottom by 25. So 75 divided by 25 is 3. 100 divided by 25 is 4. Well, 3 quarters, that's something that I can think about in terms of eighths. So now that I'm here, I'm going to go one step further and say, okay, well, what if I multiply top and bottom by two? 
and I end up with 6 over 8. So now we can see really easily, we've got a really easy comparison basis, that all of our numbers have denominators of 8. And so I can say that, well, the smallest fraction would be 2 over 8, and the next largest would be 6 over 8, and then the next one would be 7 over 8, and the last one would be 9 over 8, because the denominators are all the same. If you want to, you could convert it back into its original form. So 2 eighths was originally written as 1 quarter. 6 eighths was originally written as 0 0.75. And then these fractions were given to us in those terms. Okay, last example. So write a number between 9 eighths and 1 and 1 quarter. So we've got, uh, again here, we've got an improper fraction, and here we've got a mixed fraction, or our mixed number. And those are difficult to compare. So the way, what well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna convert one way or the other. And for me personally, it's easier to compare, I like comparing um, improper fractions. So I'm gonna take one and one quarter, and I'm gonna convert that into a mixed number. And the way we do that is we just multiply the denominator times the number out front, and then add that to the top. So four times one is four, plus one is five, so I get five over four. Okay, so now I have to uh, find a number, it says write a number between five quarters and nine eighths. There's a couple ways we can go about this, but we can see that it's still kind of difficult to compare these two numbers, and the reason they're difficult to compare is because they've got different denominators. So again, I, I know that I can convert this five quarters to be uh, some sort of fraction over eight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right here. So I'm gonna say, okay, five quarters, and I'm just gonna multiply top and bottom by two, and that would give me 10 over eight. And I'm trying to find a number between 9 eighths and 10 eighths, which you can see is actually kind of difficult to do because uh, uh, I can't add, I can't like something that's between 9 and 10 would be like 9.5, but I can't put 9.5 over 8. That doesn't make sense. But what we can do, what we've seen before is I'm allowed to change, I'm allowed to multiply the, the denominator and the numerator, numerator by the same number. And so that's something I can do here. What if I was to multiply top and bottom by 2? And do the same thing here, multiply the top and bottom of this by 2. Well, 9 times 2 would be 18. And then 8 times 2 would be 16. And over here, 10 times 2 would be 20. And 8 times 2 would be 16. Now, if someone was to ask you what's a number between 18 sixteenths and 20 sixteenths, that'd be pretty simple. You'd say, well, I guess uh, between 18 and 20 is just 19. 19 sixteenths. So there's your answer. All right, that's it for 3.2. Uh, don't forget to do the recap.